IVC, Dale Gate433, back with another video. Excuse me while I just kill that so it doesn't make a noise. Um, yeah, this um, is my late, belated uh, response to the thread that's gone wild in the VC over the last month or so around your 10 most played records or variants upon that theme and I've in enjoyed the videos I've seen. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to do a video because it kind of peaked um, probably mid-August and uh, uh, I was on holiday and then kind of not able to make videos for a while. So I thought, well, I've, it's past its peak. I won't, um, I'll give this one a miss. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and pretty much everything that I was going to say has been said. Um, not everything I was going to show has been shown, but uh, so um, anyway. However, um, I got a I got an email last week from um, from the VC, um, so um, hence I'm here today making this video. Yeah, so this is from the um, I'll read it out because some of you may also have received this email. This is from the chair of the Vinyl Community Standards and Ethics Committee. Um, I'll read it out. So, dear Gatefold Thirty Three. Regretfully, I'm writing to you following information ascertained by the Vinyl Community Police and passed this committee for due consideration. Following a routine investigation into video compliance obligations, we have been informed that Gate 433 has not yet published a thread response video on Gate 433's 10 most played albums. The Vinyl Community Standards and Ethics Committee requests that Gate 433 expedites the rectification of this oversight at the earliest opportunity. Failure to comply with this direction within 14 days may result in a referral to the Vinyl Community Disciplinary Committee. This may lead to a Star Chamber review of Gate 433's Vinyl Community membership eligibility. I am sure Gate 433 appreciates the seriousness of failing to follow Vinyl Community Standards and Ethics diligently, enthusiastically and absolutely. I hope this matter can be brought to an acceptable resolution in a timely manner. Yours sincerely, blah, 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 Chair of the Vinyl Community Standards and Ethics Committee. So I, that surprised me. I wasn't, you know, and I have checked, obviously, my subscription um, and, you know, my membership. Uh, and, yeah, obviously, they read small print and, OK, fair cop. So apologies for that. And I will rectify this now with this video. So... So uh, when I was considering this video, I was considering three um, three angles. Uh, either my formative years, uh, the, what what got me to, to music, and so showing some stuff from from that that may well have been most played. Or then I was gonna thinking about the car years, the CD years, and the car years particularly. Uh, and you know when uh, and the period when I drove a lot and therefore listened to a lot of music on CD in the car because that also was um, a peak period for certain records albums CDs uh, and there may be on the go-to side of it some recent stuff that was perhaps go-to for me that would have been new, not not common for others which may uh, and I've decided to focus on the first two so I may do something on the third one another time so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do sort of a brief, well, show a few things um, in the formative years category and then show a load of stuff quickly in the CD years category. Um, this is going to be a long one, probably, but, you know, they made me do it. Um, right. Uh, so and I've talked about these first ones before. So these are the big three records in my parents' small and perhaps um, unappealing, apologies to my parents, uh, record collection that I played a lot on a portable um, record player uh, in my earliest years. I could probably, I can't, I can't exactly say what, when it was, but it would have been seven, eight, nine probably. Um, and these are Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Water, and Paul Simon's There Goes Rhyme and Simon. So these were played to death. Then maybe a year or two after that, I got my first records of my own as a gift, as a birthday or Christmas gift. 
and I was into films and um, at the time reading books about films lists I've always been a list person uh, and I got we weren't a wealthy family so I got um, most of my uh, I should, again apologies to my parents a, a lot of my um, presents were um, you know from the budget end so uh, and one of the good budget ways of getting into films was and I don't have anything this is a divider in my collection this is the only evidence I must pick some of these up for, for, for nostalgia reasons at, at Carby itself sometime I, I've shown this before as well in this same format these were the music for pleasure Jeff Love his orchestra and singers and they did a series of records on um movie themes so this is big big movie themes which is a bit of a compilation of the best of, of, of most of them um i also remember getting bond movie themes westerns although i thought it had a different cover to that and possibly big war movie themes i know i had three or four of these and again i played them to death because it was something new that wasn't the, the other records in my parents collection so i played them to death um the next kind of development would have been uh, top of the pop well top of the pops would have been there as a constant and i would have watched it and i would have been my childlike ear ear would have picked up particularly in the 70s there was a lot of novelty stuff um uh, uh, you know obviously glam and novelty so so i definitely would have picked up on that as a child but nothing you know nothing sticks out as a, a, a as a um as a song that you know i would have gotten played um but about the age of so and, and i was never a cool kid so I, I i've said this before i was not a john peel or even an old gray whistle test I, uh, you know i may have dabbled in those when friends at school said oh you must listen to this uh and and so often with john peel it was like what's all that noise what's that racket which is a shame i wish i'd I wish I had clicked and stayed with John Peel, but I didn't, so I can't pretend I did. Uh, and uh, but so Top of the Pops was my main source of musical inspiration in those in those days of the of the seventies. And um, so I so but around the age of fourteen, I got for birthday or Christmas a boombox, um, a single cassette radio stereo portable cassette player. And that was a game changer. Um, it, you know, it for me, um, it led to the, the next phase, which I'll get to in a minute. But it led to, A, an ability to, to be able to tape from the radio um, and make my own compilation tapes, if you like, um, rather than, you know, with all, taping on a, another, a portable cassette player with a microphone against the speaker of the TV uh, when Top of the Pops was on. So I could now kind of, take stuff from the radio illegally obviously uh, and and play it in my own time and some of the records that spring to mind as um key uh there's five i'll show five yeah um uh, and these are from 77 through to maybe 80 um just kind of over that period that spring to mind are um althea and donna's Uptown Top Ranking, Buggles Video Killed the Radio Star, Kate Bush Wuthering Heights, Gloria Gaynor I Will Survive, and I don't have, them there. Don't, don't have a seven inch version, but the specials Ghost Town. They were um, songs that really. Um, stayed with me and probably some madness stuff and other things like that as well uh but um yeah so so that was um as i said the, the cassette player um at, at the age of 14 so whatever that was 70 about 1980 i probably got that um 79 might, might have been because i was taping this stuff i can't remember if i taped that stuff with a microphone or taped it um myself but anyway um having that was a, was a revelation because i could i could play music in a stereo in a decent form and that led to me buying cassettes uh, and um, the first 
so the first albums I would have bought would have been on cassettes. I'll show a couple of those in a sec because I can't quite remember what was my first album I ever bought. Um, but, um, but some would have been on vinyl. Uh, but certainly a cup, I bought a few comps. Um, so I bought some um, single artist comps. Again, I'll show you in a bit in a minute. But one of the first I remember buying was um, Relics by Pink Floyd. This was the first Pink Floyd album I bought myself. So this would have been about 1980 probably. Um, because I've told the story before, you know, Hearing the Wall, my uncle's copy of The Wall on cassette was my first experience of Pink Floyd and that got me into Pink Floyd and then a friend's brother taped all the all the albums for me and I at the age of 13 experienced Pink Floyd and virtually nothing else but then um, a bit after that I um, I got a cassette of oops run it the wrong way around I got a cassette of this um, this is Soul, which is an Atlantic Soul comp. But I didn't get this one. I got this one. Actually, this one. This is the real, actual one. And the, the inlay card has been lost in the footwell of a car over the years, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, this is interesting. This shows about things you've played to death. Um, because uh, I, I got this this is soul and then when i got back into vinyl i saw this this is soul so um i picked it up and i played it and i thought it doesn't sound right um and I'll, I'll do an eric morecambe here it's it's all the right songs but they're not in the right order uh, and so this was the original i think 1969 this is soul comp and then uh, in 1984 um, and I thought it was earlier than this, so I must have been older than I thought. Um, I picked this up. So this was my introdu introduction to soul music. I I'd probably never really experienced soul music apart from the pop soul that would have been on top of the pops um, to that point. So what was I then? Se 17, 16, 17, well, something like that, 17, 18. And um, yeah, 17. That was my first real experience of soul when I got this cassette comp but I can't remember if I bought it or I got it as a gift uh, and but this 1984 track listing is a slightly different order to the original and it's so ingrained in my brain that when I bought the original and dropped the needle I just went this is not right this is not right that song doesn't follow that song because I knew this sequence back to front um, I probably I'll probably kind of just finish off now. I had something else to show, but so um, the first cassette I think I bought was to say if it wasn't that um, it wasn't probably that Pink Floyd Relics wasn't the first first. So the first album I bought, I've got a choice of two, either a cassette or a vinyl record, and I can't remember which. So it was either the cassette version of 24 karat purple I no longer have it but I have a vinyl record version or this actual vinyl record of um, David Gilmore's so it would have been about 1980 as I said 1980 I would have um, or my, or just early 80s um, this is actually mine because it's got my blooming name written on the front of it I don't know I wonder I'm getting hassled by the vinyl community standards committee and if they see that i'll probably get another email um yeah so that's sorry that's my formative years i was 14 minutes okay so so that carried on uh cassettes i was an early adopter of cds when i bought a hi-fi uh in 88 87 88 so i was a fairly early adopter of cds because i bought a hi-fi and had a cd player added to it uh, and um, yeah, bought a load of rubbish to start with. I've shown level 42 was my first CD. Uh, so, so I'm now going to move on to what I call the, the CD years or, or more specifically the car CD years. So um, 
my son was born, our first child, in 1994, and we needed to get a bigger car or get a, get a new car. And uh, we bought our first new car, uh, and I haven't bought a new car since then, but we bought our first new car, new, new, and we had a CD player as an optional extra. And so in 1994, this was, uh, so again, it was fairly new to have CD players in a car. And my job around, well, not a little bit after that, my job meant I drove around a lot. I used to do a lot of driving, either commuting or, or, or off to um, off to different jobs on different sites. So, so, so the car CD years probably were 94 to 2006. 2006, I got my current kind of employ. I started with my current employer and started commuting on train. So, so 94 to 2006 were the car CD years, and were also the peak of the CD years. So, what I was going to do is um, quickly show lots of cds and i've got them in two piles because i've got my cds are now organized in like three different sections so i've kind of got them in different piles um so i'm going to try and do them alphabetically and this is going to be quick and it may go all over the floor in a minute um, of examples of cds that would have been played in that um, 94 to 06 and a lot of them were released in 94 to 06 not all of them some of them would have got in um, because they were just very popular but I'm not showing all of the very popular albums because otherwise I'm just going to show the, the, the top albums so these were and a lot of these as well sorry my, my, my son was born in 94 my daughter was born in 99 so the those years were also times of family a lot of family trips in the car in at weekends certainly holidays uh and if i was going to play a cd it normally had to be a cd that the family and that's you know f f you know small children at wife and me could get on with uh and um and eventually it led to me uh also when i got a computer burning cd mix tapes mix cds um of tracks from these cds as well so they had to be the family favorites of these albums anyway get on with it because this is going to take a while um so in sort of alphabetical order from trying to pick from two piles um and some of these may well be the most played um album um some of them may not I, I, I think the most played album I've got is probably Kate Bush Hounds of Love, but I doubt it. Um, right, show some bloody CDs now. So I'll, I'm showing all of these in CD form. I may have a lot of these, if most of these, no, a lot of these I have um, on, on vinyl now anyway. ACDC, Back in Black. Air, Moon Safari. Arcade Fire. Suburbs, Arctic Monkeys debut, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. Beatles number ones, Ben and Sebastian, Boy with the Arab Strap, Black Crows, Shake Your Money Maker, Block Party, Silent Alarm, Blur, Park Life, um, Isabel Campbell and Mark Lanigan, Ballad of Broken Seas, The Corals Debut, Evanescence, Fallen, some of these may also get me drummed out of the vinyl community, Flaming Lips, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, Franz Ferdinand's debut, Garbage version 2, uh, Goldfrap Felt Mountain, Gomez Bring It On, Gorillas Demon Days, Green Day Dookie, Richard Hawley, Cole's Corner, 
some of these I would have played my from my own when I was out commuting on my own. But like I say, a lot of these are family ones. So this is probably one I played on play my own. Iron and wine, iron and wine. The shepherd's dog. Um, Carnatica, delicate flame of desire. Um, Kasabian. The Last Shadow Puppets, The Age of the Understatement, Daniel Lupi and Rome, Manic Street Preachers, Everything Must Go, Manson, Attack of the Grey Lantern, Mercury Rev, Deserter's Songs, um, Metallica, um, Metallica. This is an album I probably never play again. So this is this is a candidate for overplayed album. Um, I've shown mostly Autumn, probably my second most played artist of all time behind Pink Floyd. Mostly Autumn. Passengers would have been a key uh, muse, um, and um, Black Holes and Revelations. Uh, Oasis, definitely, maybe. Ocean Colour Scene, Mosley Shoals. Um, probably my favourite by this artist, but Primal Scream, Vanishing Point. Massively played, again, the candidate for most played album in the car. OK Computer, Radiohead, REM, Automatic for the People. Josh Rouse, Nashville, Scorpions, Worldwide Live, um, Soundgarden, Super Unknown, I've shown the vinyl copy of this recently, Stereophonics, Debut, The Strokes, Is This It, Supergrass, I Should Coco, Teenage Fan Club Grand Prix, Richard Thompson, Mock Tube, and the White Stripes Elephant. So, flash through a load of CDs that may have survived the family test, um, or a few of them in there that I would have listened to commuting a lot. Um, so, yeah, so glad, happy to do that um, video final community and um, I'll maybe be back with another video soon. Cheers. Bye.